Uh, we always talk about the future of space, but the A in NASA stands for aeronautical, which also means working on major technological advances that will help us right here at home. Yeah, right now a team of NASA innovators are using the science of sound to help make supersonic flight over land possible, and that can lead to major changes to the way we fly down the road. So to tell us about it, Dr. Jonathan Ratsum, a research aerospace engineer and technical co-lead for community tests for NASA's Quest mission is joining us. Dr. Ratsum, can you tell us more about what Quest is? Absolutely, good morning. Uh, Quest is a NASA mission, a NASA aeronautics mission with two main goals. The first is to demonstrate a new technology of low noise supersonic flight. So supersonic flight without the sonic boom that's traditionally associated. And the second goal is to uh, survey the public on their perceptions and their reactions uh, to supersonic overflights from a new uh, demonstrator aircraft that NASA is building, the X-59. And, and tell us, why is supersonic flight over land so important? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, my family and I live in Virginia, and my parents live in Oregon. And so traveling from coast to coast uh, means a long day of travel. Yeah. So the goal of supersonic flight is to get travelers to their destinations more quickly so grandparents can spend more time with grandkids. Mm -hmm. well, that's really cool. And you mentioned the X-59. That's an experimental X-59 aircraft. Um, how will that work? So uh, the X-59 is uh, it's a 100 foot aircraft. It's about the size of a basketball court. It has one pilot uh, that's it can only seat one person. Uh, it's just it's being built for the purpose of demonstrating this technology. And then NASA will share the, the tools and the technologies with industry for uh, companies that may want to build uh, supersonic aircraft in the future. Okay, so you mentioned like Virginia, Oregon takes a whole day of travel, to, or a long day of travel mm -hmm. by plane, but then what would it look like supersonic travel and it's X-59 getting from Virginia to Oregon? Right, so with uh, supersonic travel, you can basically look at uh, cutting your travel times in half. So if it took six hours to get from coast to coast, that would be a, a three hour trip. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, we fly Texas to L.A. and I'm like, oh, man, this right. is rough. But that would, yeah, condensing any time would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, what will the sonic thump sound like? What can you say to that? Uh, a sonic boom, uh, for, for those people who have heard them, is a really explosive type of sound. You know, it sounds like uh, thunder from lightning that's directly overhead. Uh, a sonic thump, by contrast, uh, might sound more like distant thunder from a storm that's on the horizon, more, much more of a soft thump sound, or it could also sound like a car door slam from a car that's uh, across the street. Okay, all right, and would the, so would this new technology be applied to all types of planes? I mean, I imagine, you know, when airlines hear about cutting flights in half, they're all going to want to jump on board. So passenger planes, cargo planes? Yeah, any any plane that flies, any civilian plane, any commercial plane that flies supersonically over land in the future will be able to trace its routes to X-59 and the low, low noise supersonic overflights. And uh, Dr. Rassam, how long has this process uh, been going on here and what's next? <laughs> Well, the, uh, the contract to build X-59 uh, with Lockheed Martin, that was awarded in 2018. Uh, however, you know, the first supersonic flight uh, by Chuck Yeager was uh, almost 75 years ago in October, it would be the 75th anniversary. So uh, the research into how to quiet the sonic boom has been going on for decades. And in terms of what's next, uh, as soon as the aircraft is built, uh, we're targeting a first flight for X-59 in December of this year. Oh. Uh, we'll spend uh, we'll spend several months uh, making sure that it's safe to fly, that it performs the way it's supposed to. And then uh, in, uh, in 2023, we'll also spend time making sure that uh, it's as quiet as it's supposed to be. Uh, and once that's complete in 2024, our plans are to begin a series of community tests uh, that I mentioned before, where the aircraft will overfly different communities uh, across the country and the residents of those communities will be surveyed about their perceptions. 
Oh, very cool. So do you already know what communities um, that would happen in? Uh, the communities haven't been selected yet, uh, but uh, the X-59 can't just uh, take off from any airfield across the country. Uh, the airfield has to meet certain specifications in terms of the runway, in terms of the infrastructure in that airfield, and also it can't be an airfield that's too busy with other commercial flights. Uh -huh. So we're, we're right now reviewing uh, the airfields that would be eligible and, and the communities that would be overflown from those airfields. Dr. Russell, I mean, I just want to ask you, how cool is your job? I mean, what, <laughs> when you were a, a kid interested in doing, did, was this always your dream to do something to this level? It, it was not. I feel extremely lucky to, to be working at NASA, to be working on this team, and to be working on a project that's about uh, changing the future and improving aviation for, for all travelers. It's really something. It is. It's, it's very it's cool. It's so cool. I mean, and when you talk about since 2018, I mean, that's a 2018 to 2024 where, where you'll do these sort of test flights or yeah. in communities. That's, that's actually not a long time. So um, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing these um, details of, of the plan and the Quest program. Dr. Jonathan Rathsom, Research Aerospace Engineer and Technical Co-Lead for Community Test for NASA's Quest mission. Smartest guy in the room. Smartest, yes, yeah. In the, in the building, I think. Smartest guy in our building. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. We appreciate you being with us this morning.